Hello everyone, Benny here. <coughs> Dang it, excuse me. In, in this video, we're going to be... I know I said in the last video, we were going to start setting this up to be programmed, and depending on how long this takes, we might still do that, but there's been one thing that I forgot to do so far, and that is, one, we have to extend out the reading bus, because we want to be able to read a value from memory and be able to send it back into, well, our registers if we really want to. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this out. And uh, that seems long enough. Actually, I'm going to do something to make this a bit easier. So first I'm going to go over redstone. I'm going to select this is position 1. And this is position 2. And now I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste. And it's like instant busing. That almost never happens. So, anyways, over that all the way. Got extended now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seven more, I think. I'm not entirely sure about that, but... First off, we're going to need to, do again, make this rotate 90 degrees and invert it. So, there it goes. There's number 1. Number two, number three, and our friend number four. And this is pretty much as far out as I'm ever going to go with this. If you want to expand it out more, you can just keep the wires going, but uh, this is as far as I want to go, so this is as far as I am. Crap. I did one less than I needed to, and I'm sorry. It's okay, it's an easy fix. It's good to catch these things early. And... Almost done. And... Okay. So now, what you want to do is you want to send them over to... Which are all the equivalent, um... Register wires. So just extend them out so they're at the length. And then you're just going to... Send the inverse over, I mean, uninverted, when they get to the wire. And again, you want an explanation? Explanation bit. And it's not quite long enough. I wonder, I wonder if I can get away with this. I'm not sure if I can. I think I can. Yeah, I can get away with that. Okay. So, I don't think I can get away with this one, though, so... It's unfortunate, but it's going to take one tick longer for this one number. That's okay. And there you go. So now, if we load a value from memory, we can send it into our AOU. <coughs> now, there's a couple more things I want to do. First off, I want to set up expansion slots. So, again, same st story for many times four. The diagonal rotation downwards and wires. So. I'll explain how this works in a second. Just need to set all these up. These are the annoying ones to set up. Oh, well, it, it, it worked in theory anyways. Okay, this isn't working. Hmm. I still haven't found a good way to do this, this thing. But okay. Now, we need... Uh, actually, I can do it right here. So now we're going to need to invert it again, and we're going to set up a control wire. And what this is essentially is it's an expansion slot. We can hook up some other redstone machine to this, and we can send information to it if we wanted to. So this, these slots are these things let our computer control upper redstone machines if we wanted to. And that's the whole purpose of expansion slots. So. Anyways, need to do it again, unfortunately. I know, it's painful. You know, one day I'm going to learn to figure out where all these should be and then do them before I set up the busing above it. But, till that day. Okay. So hang on. Almost there. And... Okay, 
here we go. So this is expansion slot one, and this is expansion slot two. One second. All right, now let's worry about ROM a little bit. We've done, a, we basically fixed the reading bus, so it's right. Now let's worry about ROM. Now, one thing I did when I labeled these is I didn't show you that, but I labeled them mostly how you'd expect ROM 1, ROM 2, and now when it's where it gets a little weird user input 2 and user input 1. The reason is because I'm going to use these two sets of ROM as a user input. So you can put a number, like, I don't know, they want to put input 10, and then do something with 10, but... but so, in order to do that correctly, we will need to also send user input to the writing bus, because you might want to just read it out and send it to the AOU, or you might... Actually, I'm debating on whether or not you might want to just save it. Because my, my thinking is, if you had user input, you probably would just want to send it to the AOU because it's already saved. So yeah, I've actually maybe this is probably this is probably good. So now we're almost to the point where our our I guess you could call com computational skeleton if you want to call it that. It sounds kind of weird, but if and it's almost to the point where that's done. So. Let me get back to snow, and I'm going to send power here. The reason I'm sending power here is because we are finally to the point where we're going to add serial busing. Or not serial busing, but repeaters. Because now our computer is pretty much entirely complete, except there's a little bit more we need to do with the AOU, which we're going to do in this video. And we're going to need to set up program memory. So, first off, this is the earliest point I can set it up, so... Set that up there, and I'll just set this up. And earliest point I can set this up is right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And what about these two? And you know why not? Just just go ahead and power everything. Okay, so they're slightly out of order with each other, but that's okay. So repeaters, repeater, repeater. It's okay, these don't have to be perfectly equivalent with one another. They can be slightly off. As long as you don't have any repeaters over a block that has a torsion on the side, you're good. So there are our repeaters for that. And I'll just break all these. And okay. <coughs> so... Now we need repeaters on the writing bus. And I know repeaters are not the most fun thing to add, but they, they must be done. One point or another, they must be done. And actually, I'm going to go down the center because I think I can reach them all from the center. And again, they can't be over any of the stuff places those are. So if I can't get it, reach can I? Hey! Okay, and I don't think that's interfering with anything, is it? And it's hard to tell, but... Uh, no, it's not. Okay, so these wires will not interfere with anything. And I gotta go back to set this up, and... Ah, too early. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, hopefully that was the last one I have to do under there, and, uh, almost, unfortunately. That's okay, though. So, one... Probably should have done this off camera. But you know, I, this is showing you how to set them up so that they're max for maximum optimization. So that's that's good. Now you can't do it there. Just keep going almost to the end of the reading bus. And there we go. So that I think that's adding Okay, I think that actually means we have repeaters for every single one of our, um, one of our wires in the computer. 
And I went around and checked, and no, we didn't. We didn't do these. So, let's go ahead and do those. And I know I probably could have done it off camera, but actually... Hey, oh, no, now that I think about it, we don't need to do that. Never mind, never mind. Okay, so now we are finally going to turn our little AOU and register system into uh, an official CPU. So how on earth do we do this? In fact, we've been pretty much done with it for a long time. It just hasn't really fit in with what we were doing. In fact, I probably could have done this a lot earlier. It's literally these two wires that's going to make all the difference. So, first off, yeah, I probably should have done this near the register video, but I, I didn't, so... Oh well. Now we aren't adding repeaters to these yet, because these are control wires. We aren't doing repeaters for control wires yet. That's the reason we haven't done repeaters for this or this. And I'll show you why in the next video. Because I think the next video is where we're going to be setting up a hard drive. So. Now. This is input A. So this wire is going to control input A, so it's going to need torch on ev over every input A1, and this one's going to need torch over every input B1. And it doesn't have to be in any particular orientation as long as it's powering it. And at some point we'll need to invert the power to go into these, but other than that, we now have a CPU, because it has reading and writing commands, and I'll just use these to make it easier. So. If I temporarily add some repeaters to this, we can do some processing with this if we really wanted to. And it's not really programmed, so it's not going to be easy to use. So, but that's okay. Later on, we'll set up programming, and it's going to be very, very easy to use this. So, <coughs> right now, I. So now, let's just get out this value. Let's see what's there. Nothing, because we haven't sent anything in. So. Here, let's add 10 plus 2. So, first thing we have to do is we're going to have to load the 10 and send that as input A into our ALU. Then we are going to have... Now, okay, so we've loaded the 10, now let's load the 2. And send that as input B into our AOU. And there we go. Now I need want to add them, so I select the adding command. And 10 plus 2 is doing this weird thing. That's good because now we've got auto glitch. And what oh wait this is odd. Okay, so that's just a glitch in the register system. This could be caught that. So now let's try that again. So, okay, there we go. All that is set up. And it's still doing it. Why is this... Oh. Again, don't put your stuff over the torches. You will get big problems if you do that. Let's try this again. Okay, so I want to load a 10, and I want to save that at his... And, oh yeah, turn off the kid output. Save that as input A. And, okay, that's our first user input. Now, let's get the 2. Get this as input B. And, there, so now I'm no longer writing. I want the output of this. Which is, I'm right now I'm getting 8 and 4, that's 12. That's correct. So now I can go under. I can save this to say just RAM 0. That should be my writing command. So now I can go ahead and read that back out. So I just passed it through RAM essentially. Now I should be getting a. Oh, that's because I forgot to turn that off? And now, if I wanted, I can send that out, and I could have a seven-segment display hooked up to our expansion slot or something. And that's our result. So, we've just done our first bit of processing with this. And, 
don't worry, you'll be able to do much better, more interesting things than just addition and subtraction in the end of this. These are just the functions of the CPU. It's essentially the most basic thing you can do right now. But, uh, there you go, that's an example of processing. And I need to stop reading. And, but you did see that what's a lot hard, well, it's very hard to use right now because we haven't hooked it up to any program memory. We can't really program it to do anything. But, uh, yeah. So there you go. Thought you might find that interesting, so thank you. I will see you in the next video where we will be hooking up program memory. See you then.